Last time, we learned how to download data using the Navigator in the Paleobiology database. Now remember, the Navigator is a graphical interface that shows us all of the fossil occurrences in a specific time period. So we could look at a specific taxon and then download the data for the occurrences. So last time, we looked at the occurrences of the genus Canis during the Cenozoic. And the data that we downloaded looked like this. So it's occurrence data. And so what we see here is um, information about when we downloaded the data and the parameters for the geographic locations. So remember that you can download data from just the area that you see in Navigator, or globally if you zoom all the way out. And then we see taxon name, taxon rank, uh, information about the time period in which it was found. Note that the time periods are not going to be all equivalent depending on the age constraints. Some of them will be more specific or smaller time slices, whereas others will be larger time slices. Here's the ages and millions of years for those time slices. So the earliest age would be the first appearance and the late age would be the last appearance. Where the fossil comes from. Okay, so this is data that I downloaded just from um, Central Eastern United States, so we're just seeing states like Virginia and Maryland. And then if we keep scrolling over, we'll find more information potentially that was entered by um, the authorizers, including lithology, lithological description, uh, and environment. So we can see here that most of these fossils came from cave environments. So when you download data from the navigator, what you're downloading is occurrence data. So you'll see a single species appear more than once so, for example, here we have Canis uh, latrans showing up a number of times because it has an entry for each time it shows up in a collection. So this type of data is useful for some questions, but it's not super useful if we're interested in looking at diversity or ranges of an entire species or group of species. We have to do a lot of work with this data set to extract the type of information. So fortunately, the Paleobiology database will do much of that for us. However, not through the Navigator portal. For that, we have to turn to a different aspect of the Paleobiology database, one of the other apps. So for this, we're not going to use Navigator. Instead, we're going to go to Apps on the Splash Page Gallery. And then we're going to go to PBDB Classic. OK, so from PBDB Classic, what we're going to do is go up to the download link, and you'll see there's a number of options. We're going to click the first one, Collection, Occurrence, or Specimen Data. So here's our download request form. Now this is the basic option form. We could also go to the full form if we wanted to see more options, but we'll start with this now. So we'll enter our name. We won't change these. Taxonomic level that we're going to use is the genus, and the taxa to include, we're going to look at the cetacea, which includes the whales and the dolphins. Oldest and younger intervals, we'll just leave this blank because we want to look at all of the cetacea. If we were only interested in the cetacea from a specific time interval, we could enter, enter that here. So we could say, say, Pleistocene to Pleistocene or uh, Eocene to Oligocene, for example. And then the other thing to note is that we have lots of other options here. So under included collections, we could look at different lithologies, different environments, different environmental zones, and different continents or paleocontinents. Under collection fields, this is going to include the information that's going to be downloaded. So the important thing here is time fields. So right now, the Paleobiology Database standardized 10 million year bins is clicked off, which we pretty much always want to keep. But if we are interested in other uh, time periods, like period or sub-epoch or stage, we would need to click those here now. Occurrence fields includes other information that we might want to include in our download data, but for now we're not going to worry about that too much. So now we can create our data set. It gives us information about how to cite the data, and we're going to just download the data, and now it's going to give us a bunch of options for things to download. You can download occurrences, just like what we saw in Navigator, or references, but we're, what we're interested in right now are taxonomic ranges. So we can just click on that, and it will download our data.
So once we create our data set and then open it back up in Excel, this is what we're going to see. So here we have all the genera over on the left hand side and you can see that they're in alphabetical order. And then the next columns show base of range in millions of years. So this is the oldest or first appearance of this genus in the fossil record. Similarly, top of range is also in millions of years, and this is the youngest or last appearance of this genus in the fossil record. Collections shows us in how many collections this genus appears in the paleobiology database. So here, the uh, data is sorted by alphabetical order for the genus name, which isn't super helpful for us if we want to look at ranges of taxa. So to reorganize the data according to uh, age, we can just select all the data here and then click on this little funnel filter tool. And that will make each one of these top categories into a sortable column. So if we click on base of range, it'll ask us if we want to sort by ascending or descending order. And if we click ascending, here we go. We can click descending and it'll reverse. We can do that with top of range as well. So here, top of range, all of these taxa that have a zero, this means that these genera are still around today. So there are species within these genera that exist in the modern. Okay, so now we have our data sorted by top of range with our taxa that are still around in the modern at the top and those that went extinct a long time ago at the bottom. The next thing we'll do is learn how to make a range chart. So that will be a bar chart that shows one line for each of these genera, showing their first appearance and their last appearance in the fossil record. To do that, we're going to have to calculate a new value in this spreadsheet called range. And range is simply going to be our last appearance minus our first appearance. So it should be a positive value. And we'll just drag this all the way down. There we go. Now we have ranges in millions of years for all of our taxa. Now I'll just show you a graph with a selection of this data. So let's start with this genus here, cell 35, and we'll go down to 60. So I'm selecting the range, and then I'm going to select top of range, okay? So it's range and top of range. And I held the command button in order to select both of those at the same time. Now I'm going to go up to charts and I'm going to create a stacked bar chart. So here we have a chart with two series in it. The first series represents our range data and the second series represents our top of range. So now we're going to trick Excel into making these floating bars by going to Format Data Series for our blue lines here. And in Fill, we'll go to No Fill. And in Line, we'll go to No Line. Click OK. There's still a shadow. We can get rid of that later. But as you can see, now we have range data for all of the fossils that we selected. And so we can create this type of range chart for all of our data or of a selection of our data, and it can show us temporal trends and patterns in genus origination and extinction in the cetacea over time. If you want to flip the axes, which I like to do so that present is on the right, you can just control click on the axes or right click on the axes, go to format axis, scale, and values in reverse order. So now the present is on the right.